My name is Jim Burke. I am the CEO of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and I appreciate you being here today. Uh, as important, I appreciate the people behind me today, uh, because yesterday was an assault, an assault on our community, an assault on the city of Los Angeles, anybody who lives here, and the fact that these people behind me came together so quickly, leaders of our community, gives you a sense of how important it is that we move forward together. And what you will hear is a group of people committed to moving forward in ways that really will make a difference and protect everyone who lives in our great city. So with that, please join me in uh, welcoming Mayor Bass. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, this morning, Councilwoman Yaroslawski and I spoke and called on leaders of the community to come together to discuss what happened. The violence that happened in the Pico Robinson neighborhood yesterday was abhorrent, and blocking access to a place of worship is absolutely unacceptable. What we witnessed was anti-Semitism in the heart of one of our Jewish communities. This violence was designed to stoke fear. It was designed to divide. But hear me loud and clear, it will fail. What you see up here with me today is a united front saying unequivocally that violence and hate will find no harbor here in Los Angeles. I also want to recognize both the governor and President Biden for standing with us as well. We cannot allow hate to seep through our society, and we will not. I know the Pico Robinson neighborhood well. This is a community that I represented in Congress, in the State Assembly, and in my short time as mayor. We've stood together both in tragedy, responding to the shooting of two Orthodox men last year, and in celebration, joining together in the lighting of the menorah on the first night of Hanukkah. But now, in the events of yesterday, have cast a shadow of fear, not just in this community or in our city, but regionally and nationally. We will not allow hate to win. Last night, I called on LAPD to immediately provide additional patrols in the Pico Robinson community, as well as outside of houses of worship throughout the city. Since then, I've been in close contact with law enforcement officials, as well as civic, community, and faith leaders working to come together to ensure that this violence never happens again. In less than 24 hours of yesterday's incidents, we've worked to convene faith leaders, community groups, and law enforcement to have constructive conversation working on ensuring this does not happen again. We have decided on the following points. We will be working to immediately convene leaders of houses of worship and cultural centers to discuss how to protect sacred spaces, sharing ideas, practices, and strategies to keep congregants safe. LAPD will enhance their partnership with Jewish public safety organizations to continually review evolving tactics and threats to the community and to ensure that we are not just responding but taking proactive action to prevent these instances from happening in the first place. We will also work with our state representatives, uh, especially Assemblymember Jesse Gabriel, to bring resources here to protect LA houses of worship. Councilwoman Yaroslawski will be introducing an urgent motion to secure additional funding as well. We also will be contacting and having a conversation with our city attorney, Heidi Felstein Soto, to talk about several things that we need to examine. For example, permits for protests, the idea of people wearing masks at protests, and establishing clear lines of demarcation between what is legal and what is not. But know that this isn't just a one-off. This is a sustained commitment. As mayor, my number one job is to keep people safe, and I want to assure Angelinos that we will continue our efforts to make sure that you not just feel safe, but you actually are safe, especially in places of worship. Los Angeles will not stand for anti-Semitism. Los Angeles will not stand or tolerate violence. And know this, those that are responsible for either 
will be found and held accountable. And I want to thank all of the leaders here that are standing today. Again, what you see here is a united front, a united front against violence, a united front against hate. Let me introduce my partner and colleague, Councilwoman Katie Yaroslawski. Thank you, Mayor Bass, for your partnership over the last 24 hours in particular, but also for the last year and a half. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Mayor Bass and I just finished a series of internal meetings with law enforcement, private security companies, and community leaders to discuss the completely unacceptable violence in Pico Robertson, my neighborhood, yesterday. Our conversation focused on how the situation escalated so unacceptably and the next steps for developing a concrete plan of action to prevent this from happening again. There is understandably a lot of fear right now in the Jewish community, and what happened yesterday only deepened those fears. This violence would have been unacceptable anywhere in Los Angeles, but that this protest was planned and carried out in front of a synagogue in the heart of LA's Jewish community on a Sunday afternoon is completely indefensible. It's deeply disturbing and it's rooted in anti-Semitism. This is not who we are. Los Angeles is a city of diversity, inclusion, and mutual respect. We are also a city that values everyone's right to peaceful protest or counter-protest. It's among the most important freedoms we hold as Americans, but we will not tolerate violence, intimidation, or any act that seeks to divide us. I spoke with Assemblymember Gabriel this morning. He reaffirmed the state's commitment to including $40 million in funding next fiscal year for nonprofit security grants, which is going to help provide security services at Jewish institutions and with our uh, Jewish public safety partners. Mayor Bass and I will be working with members of the Jewish caucus in the state legislature to accelerate the disbursement of that funding as quickly as possible. And as the mayor uh, just mentioned, I'm gonna be bringing a motion at tomorrow's city council meeting to identify additional city resources for security services to bridge the gap between when those grants become available. Uh, I'd next like to introduce uh, LAPD Police Chief Dominic Choi to say a few words. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, mayor, thanks for including me in this important conversation. So first of all, I just wanna acknowledge that to the Jewish community, I hear you. I, I, I won't say I understand your fear, but I know you are fearful and I hear that. No community anywhere should be in fear of going to a house of worship uh, and have to wonder if they're gonna be attacked or stopped or questioned. Um, and so public safety is my challenge. It's LAPD's challenge. It's our calling. That's what we do. That's what this city county family is doing here today to support those efforts to increase public safety. Number one rule, violence is not tolerated anywhere. Whether you have protesters, counter protesters, uh, you're, okay, you're okay to protest peacefully, but violence will not be tolerated. I also look forward as we discuss a little bit, as the mayor discussed a little bit, uh, I'm gonna be coordinating, my officers will be coordinating with community public safety organizations within this community to come up with other solutions, immediate solutions, boots on the ground solutions that we can see uh, rapidly better outcomes and results when these incidents occur. I would obviously prefer that we never see these again, but if they occur, we will be, have, a, have a more robust uh, and more tactical strategic response. As for yesterday's incident, there, we, all, we all know there was one arrest, but there's ongoing investigations. Please know that we are gonna continue to investigate all acts of violence, try to identify these suspects or perpetrators and arrest them and bring them to justice. I also want to add that we are absolutely providing extra patrol to all houses of worship within the city of Los Angeles. Again, not only do I want to increase public safety, I want to increase the sense of safety. I want people to have contacts with our, with our community law enforcement officers or senior lead officers, have points of contact to contact us and ask questions to build that trust and again, build that safe, safe, uh, sense of safety. Uh, so thank you for your time. And at this time, I think I'm going to be calling up uh, County Supervisor Lindsay Horvath. Thank you, Chief. And good evening to everyone who has joined us. Demonstrations this past week, first at a Jewish preschool and yesterday at a synagogue, are anti-Semitic and unacceptable, full stop. These actions are meant to strike fear into the hearts of Jewish community members and this cannot happen in Los Angeles County. Intimidation, 
anti-Semitism, this cannot be what we allow here in Los Angeles to become. We can and must do better to root out anti-Semitism. Enough is enough. What we saw yesterday is not good enough. For Los Angeles County's part, I'll be meeting with our sheriff's department to better engage them in understanding what we mean by Jewish community safety. We have to learn from these experiences and put those lessons into action so people trust that we are doing what is right and what is necessary. I'm also supporting the Jewish Federation's Community Security Initiative, which assesses security threats at Jewish institutions throughout Los Angeles. And I'm committed to partnering with our state leaders to support their proposal to invest $160 million for nonprofit community security grants. I want to thank especially Assemblymember Gabriel for his leadership in this uh, effort. And I also want to acknowledge Assemblymember Isaac Bryan, who was not able to be here with us in person, but is also committed to this work. Related to that effort, my office is leading a Jewish community safety plan for Los Angeles County which includes creating protocols for securing sensitive sites to ensure our Jewish community members can safely gather to worship. To our Jewish community, I know you feel alone. We're here today to unequivocally affirm that you are not alone. We are standing with you today and always, and it is going to take all of us working together, elected leaders, law enforcement, and our Jewish community partners to join together to strategically take all actions to provide for the safety of our Jewish neighbors. And now I'd like to call upon Congresswoman Sydney Kamlager Dove. Thank you, board chair. I'm Sydney Kamlager Dove. I'm the Congresswoman for the 37th Congressional District right here in Los Angeles. It has been and remains a privilege to represent such a diverse district, a district that is home to a vibrant Jewish community, not just in Pico Robertson, but across Los Angeles. There is no way around it. Yesterday was a low, dark point for our community. Houses of worship are supposed to be safe spaces for all. And we all bear the responsibility to keep that so. The violence and hatred that unfolded in Pico Robertson yesterday has no place in our city and must be condemned in the strongest possible terms. There is no excuse for blocking the entrance to a synagogue. There is no excuse for targeting a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. And there is absolutely no excuse for calls of violence against the Jewish people. That is anti-Semitic, plain and simple. Regardless of our differences on many important issues, we have to be able to discuss, debate, and even disagree without hate or violence. Protest must always be peaceful. Mother Teresa wrote that the problem with the world is that we draw the circle of our family too small. We are all better than this. We are all better than this. And at the end of the day, we must all care for one another. I have committed to working with my colleagues in Congress to make sure that we are expanding the nonprofit security grant program to address what happened over the weekend, to show that we stand in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters, to make sure that houses of worship are safe, to make sure that houses of worship are safe and that people can go and pray and learn and love and heal in safety. Right now, our community is suffering from a plague of darkness and disconnection. And the only way to come out of that darkness is to come together through real action 
and meaningful connection, which may include having uncomfortable conversations, and it certainly includes listening more than talking. But it is centered in action, it is centered in truth, and it is centered on how we can build a better Los Angeles, better and safer communities, and even a better world where we can all exist in peace. Thank you, and now I would like to bring up Rabbi Cooper. Thank you, Congresswoman. 24 hours. We don't take for granted, Madam Mayor, that 24 hours later, you, along with our council person, Ketty Yaroslavsky, were here, not just for a schmooze, but what we call in Yiddish, tachlis. The leaders who are up here for the Jewish community are tachlis leaders. If we're going to protect ourselves better, we need to have the practical points, and we're so grateful, not just for your time, but for your leadership and your focus. What happened yesterday was not only a hate crime, because the targeting of a house of worship, in this case, Adas, a powerful house of prayer and learning, is not only a hate crime, but domestic terrorism. The Simon Wiesenthal Center redoubles its call to Homeland Security and the FBI to help our community connect the dots. We note that tragically yesterday also saw halfway around the world simultaneous attacks by ISIS in Russia against a church whose priest had his throat cut and a synagogue that was burnt to the ground. Germany, Canada, and yes, Los Angeles, our houses of worship must be sacrosanct. The Jewish community will work with law enforcement and our political leaders to ensure that our families, our children, and our neighbors' families and children will be safe. We will not be cowered by pro-Hamas bullies, but our community, our Jewish community, should know that our mayor, Mayor Bass, is not another miniature UC chancellor. The women and men of the LEPD are not infallible, but still our closest friends and allies in this city. The targeting of our beloved synagogue is a reminder that for our enemies, there is no distance between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. No more allowing these cowardly extremists to hide behind masks. And finally, the Simon Wiesenthal Center and our beloved Museum of Tolerance will continue to work closely with our mayor, our councilman Yaroslavsky, and our neighbors in Los Angeles to build out new allyships with faith leaders and the young people they shepherd to work together to protect and nurture a wonderful future. Thank you. Our next speaker is our colleague and friend, Jeff Abrams. Thank you, Rabbi Cooper. My name is Jeffrey Abrams, and I'm the Los Angeles Regional Director of the ADL. What we saw yesterday was an affront to all that we stand for in this city and in this nation. This was an assault, a coordinated act of hate on a place of worship. It wasn't just a place of worship, but where it's located in this very neighborhood, in the Pico Robertson neighborhood, which a little over one year ago was victimized on consecutive mornings as two Orthodox Jewish men left morning prayer services. They were shot simply for being a Jew. And a little over one year ago, many of us gathered 
law enforcement, elected officials, community organizations, and we did something in response. We worked together with LAPD, and earlier this year, it was announced that LAPD now has an online ability to report hate incidents. It is groundbreaking for the city of LA, and it helps not only the Jewish community, but the entire community. And so we are once again in a moment, a moment when something that has happened that has brought us together, and once again, we must do something. And just as we gathered privately minutes ago, we share publicly the same. As Mayor Bass said, we need to look at every available legal tool as the city attorney looks at existing anti-masking uh, laws in the state of California, but we need to do more. We need to look at, as we learn from what the experience on college campuses, time, place, and manner res uh, res restrictions, bubble zones, we must do more to protect our community. And we will do so together as a community, as a leadership, with LAPD, we will continue to work together. ADL has a groundbreaking partnership with LAPD where we train LAPD on the west side in the valley on the American Jewish experience. We will do more together, our organizations and others. Your leadership is working together, but what we ask of all of you, every Los Angelino, the Jewish community is but a small portion. We ask everyone to take their responsibility, to speak up, to say enough is enough. Today it may be the Jewish community, but it will not be the end. This is a moment to take back control. This is a pivotal moment for this city, and we are blessed, we are lucky that we have our leadership behind us, and we look forward to doing more. It's now my great pleasure to introduce my good friend, the CEO of our Jewish Federation of Los Angeles, Rabbi Noah Farkas. Good evening, everyone. Yesterday's attack on the Jewish community has proved once again that we as a Jewish community here remain vulnerable even in the greatest democracy that's ever existed in the history of the world. It's also proved over and over again, despite what those who say that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, that that's just not true in practice. What's not true in practice is not true in theory. Anti-Zionism is clearly anti-Semitism because anti-Zionists are anti-Semites. Harassment and intimidation and physical attacks against the Jewish community cannot be tolerated. Just like everyone else, we Jews have a right to assemble in peace, have a right to express our First Amendment rights, but, however, what we saw yesterday, and we witnessed time and again, across this nation, protests devolve into excuses to target and harm Jews. Our community security initiative, in constant communication with our law enforcement partners and Jewish institutions to protect the community and bring these perpetrators to yesterday's violence to justice. I want to thank the mayor, Council Member Yaroslavsky, Councilmember Tracy Park, who I saw just showed up. Thank you for coming. Council uh, Congressman Conlanger Dove, Supervisor Lindsey Horwath, and of course all the other elected officials who have supported the Jewish community because we are at an inflection point. We're actually at a decision point. A decision point where this country needs to decide whether or not it will support the Jewish community. Whether or not this country will take a different path than every other country in the history of the world and decide that this is a place for safety and security for the Jewish people. And I want to thank the elected officials who are here today and those who wished they could be here today for making the appropriate and right decision to protect the Jewish community. Whether it's through new anti-masking laws that we hope that you will take up as a suggestion, or creating safe zones around houses of worship, cultural institutions, and schools, ensuring that we as a Jewish community and others like us who are minorities here, who want to make their lives here, who just want to have jobs, go to temple, come home, and raise our children here, can do so in peace and security, happiness, and prosperity. We look forward to working with you, the elected officials, over the next several weeks and months 
to turn these ideas into actionable, measurable legislation and, um, and executive orders. We look forward to working with each and every one of you as the convener of the Jewish community. On Wednesday at 5 p.m., we're hosting a security briefing for the Jewish community, where a community security initiative in partnership with LEPD and Assemblymember Gabriel will be talking about what you, as the Jewish community, can do to help keep yourself safe. It's an online webinar. The link will be coming out either tonight or tomorrow. Please register and attend. It's my pleasure now to call upon my dear friend, Dr. Irving Leibovitz. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Irving Leibovitz, and I'm representing Agudath Israel of California. Um, one of the initiatives that we worked on uh, was mentioned by my dear colleague, uh, Jeff Abrams from the ADL, which is the um, uh, uh, eight-incident reporting system that we've worked really hard to uh, get implemented by LAPD. And it's something that's a, a step. It's a first step. I don't want to repeat a lot of what was said here. Um, we all know what happened yesterday. We all know why it happened yesterday. Um, there were a couple of action items that we were proposing in this meeting we had earlier today. I'd just like to summarize some of you've heard. Maybe some of them haven't been emphasized enough. We need to create safety zones, safety zones around our houses of worship, around our schools, around our community buildings. Protests are wonderful. It's part of the American way, but not when it interferes with other people's rights and other people's ability to get an education and other people's ability to access uh, various community services. We need to be able to shut down violence at its inception and not let it foster, similar to what happened in the UCLA campuses and other campuses around the, the state where the uh, uh, camps were allowed to be there and to, to, fl to flourish and to, and to co cut off, cordon off various aspects of the, of the university to Jewish students where you had to show your ID or you had to show you were not a Jewish in order to get into those areas. But at the first sight of violence, it needs to be shut down. As was mentioned, we're dealing with a different animal today. It's a different situation. And lastly, we need to understand that we are not dealing with a regular protest group now. We have to understand the groups that we're dealing with, what they're about. We have intelligence. We know who they are. We know what they stand for, and we know what their agendas are. Groups that come out with a plan to create violence and to create havoc need to be shut down at the beginning, not at the end, and not after what they've done. Um, the nonprofit security grant program has been mentioned a number of times. There's a lot of numbers flying around. The bottom line is we need, as a community, to get together and access those funds and use them appropriately. I would like to give a special thanks, and a really special thanks from the bottom of my heart to the mayor's office. We have dealt with mayor's offices and administrations for over 40 years, and we have never, ever, ever had an office as responsive as the office of Karen Bass. It is heartening to our community. Number one, the amount of money that these, this administration, together with Councilwoman Yaroslavsky, has put into the LAPD, I think it's historic. In the city of L.A., I don't think there's ever been an increase to the extent of that, the amount of money that was put into the LAPD by this administration. This administration came down to see what's going on, came down here. Last administrations, we couldn't get people to come down. They weren't interested in seeing what was going on in this community. And we feel the difference, and we thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. And with that, I'd like to introduce, I think the next speaker is Rabbi Yossi Alford. Thank you, Dr. Leibovitz. My name is Rabbi Yossi. I am the founder of Magen Am, the only Jewish nonprofit non organization that is licensed to provide physical security to our community. I'm going to keep this simple. I'd like to thank our elected officials and law enforcement. Uh, this is leadership, and leadership sometimes has wins and sometimes has lessons, and they were open and invited us in to have a hard conversation about what was not a win yesterday. And we are taking lessons from that and moving forward. I'd like to turn to our community at large, the greater Los Angeles community, and say just like our elected officials who are acting as our allies, because we as a Jewish community are a small community, we require allies and we are depending on our larger community to stand with us and stand on the side of good. And I'm calling upon my Jewish community 
to not have fear, to not feel as though we are helpless and can only rely on law enforcement and only rely on law and only rely on our city officials, but we too must stand up and be a strong, secure community, working with our allies, working with our community leaders, and working together to bring a more peaceful future to the entire community.